Copyright, University of South Australia. This recording may contain third-party copyright material. Apart from any use permitted under the Copyright Act 1968, no part of this recording may be reproduced or rebroadcast by any means or process without the prior written permission of the University of South Australia and the copyright owners. G'day and thank you for watching uh, the short video that we're going to talk about the pelvis. Firstly we're going to talk about the pelvic floor and the perineum. So what we know is that the pelvis is made up of a few different components. So here we have a model showing the pelvis and some of its associated nerves and vessels and ligaments. Initially we know that this is the ilium and here specifically would be the iliac fossa. The anterior bone here on the pelvis is the pubis and the inferior one is the ischium. Here we can see the socket on the side of the hip bone here and this one's called the acetabulum so the head of the femur would fit nicely inside that space. What we can do with this one is it shows us the internal musculature and some of the associated arteries and veins and nerves on the other side as well. This one is really good because we can separate it into two halves so that we can have a better look at some of the internal muscles that we can see here. So the pelvic floor diaphragm is a set of muscles which helps to support your pelvic organs as examples of those would be things like your rectum, the vagina and the uterus and in the females and the urinary bladder in both cases. So we can see here that it's shaped to support the internal structures, so supporting them kind of like a hammock. It would do things like resist changes in intra-abdominal pressure, so think about when you're coughing or you're sneezing. It stops the loss of urinary and uh, solid waste when you don't want it to. On the outside here though, you can see that we've got a slightly different set of muscles which are existing more superficially to the deeper pelvic floor muscles and these ones we call our perineum. So when we're working through the worksheet here, what we're going to do is we're going to draw the pelvic floor in on this uh, pelvis here from the superior view and we're just going to talk a little bit about the perineum in this one. So the perineum is split into two triangles, an anterior urogenital triangle separated between the ischial tuberosities here via a perineal body is a muscular structure and then that coming on the back way is here we have the posterior anal triangle and so what we've got here is the anal canal and the voluntary anal muscles around it and then anterior to that this is a female specimen so we would see the vaginal canal opening here and the urethra being opened here into this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and use this model to give us a bit of a guide towards how to draw in the pelvic floor inside this space. So having a look at it here what you can see is that there are one, two, three apertures or holes which are passing through the pelvic floor diaphragm and this would be representative of the urethra vagina and anal canal. So the most medial muscle of these three here, you can see the dark line representing the, the differences between those three. These three are what we call as levator ani. So levator ani, if you can think, will elevate. So pretend that you're stopping yourself from going to the bathroom, feel those muscles elevating the structures inside your pelvis. This most medial one here wraps around this aperture here is where you would find the rectum and the anal canal, like a sling. So it pulls on the posterior aspect of the anal canal and shuts it to help you stop um, removing waste as an example. This next one here, so that one was puborectalis. This one here is coming from the pubis and going all the way to the coccyx, so we call pubococcygeus. And this more lateral one here we call iliococcygeus. The final muscle that you see here is called coccygeus, and whilst it seems like it should be a part of um, the levator ani, these three, it isn't, but it is considered to be a part of our pelvic floor diaphragm. So if we have a go at drawing in on here the pelvic floor diaphragm, let's just zoom in a bit. So getting nice and close to this one, we're going to be drawing it exactly the same as what we would have seen in the previous image. So we're going to have one 
aperture here for the urethra then we're going to have one aperture here for the vagina and then the other one is for the rectum and the anal canal so these three shapes are representing those three structures so puborectalis we're going to draw this one as a sling so we're going to go all the way around the back of the rectum like this and come back up to the pubis so what you can imagine here is that this muscle will pull the rectum shut by compressing it from the posterior aspect and pulling it toward the anterior side so under parasympathetic control this muscle will help to stop any solid waste moving its way down into the anal canal and out oh that was under sympathetic control sorry so under parasympathetic control it would relax and allow waste to make its way through and down so sympathetic control contracts it and parasympathetic control relaxes it the next one that we're going to find is going to be our pubococcygeus so pubococcygeus coming like this passing out and going up onto the coccyx and the sacrum like this so we can color that one in like this It's important to know that this is a left-sided and a right-sided muscle, this one, whereas this one is a sling, a continuous muscle from one side to the other. Whereas this pubococcygeus actually has a small tenderness junction in it in the middle, so it separates it into its two sides. The next muscle that we would have comes from here like this and passes back once again to the sacrum and the coccyx. This is our iliococcygeus. So it comes from a tendinous arch here, that's why I'm not drawing it connecting here. So it actually comes from a tendon and passes back toward the sacrum and coccyx here. And finally, the next one is our coccygeus. So there's a bit of a crossover between these two um, on the posterior aspect of the pelvis. So we can just color them in there like, together like that. All right, let's have a bit of a key out here on this side. So our green one is coccygeus the light blue one is iliococcygeus the dark blue one pubo coccygeus and the red one puborectalis so of them these three here we call a part of levator ani so this is controlled with some autonomic tone so that it holds and supports your reproductive and pelvic organs in day-to-day -day activities such as walking or when you cough or you sneeze it stops waste from leaving the pelvis in an unwanted fashion if we include this one here as well with levator ani bring them all together the answer to that is the pelvic floor diaphragm pelvic floor diaphragm. This anterior hole here, let's see if you can remember, this one's the urethra. This central hole here, if we're considering the female pelvis, is going to be opening for the vagina and the posterior for the rectum slash anal canal. These muscles here are innervated by a nerve which is called the nerve to levator ani, which comes from our second and third sacral spinal nerves. So if we're going to answer the questions above, what is the pelvic floor diaphragm? You would say a deep set of muscles which are responsible for resisting changes around intra-abdominal pressure and supporting reproductive and pelvic organs. 
Whereas on the other hand, the perineum here is that superficial set of muscles that we can't see in this picture. But if we quickly go back to our model, we saw the more superficial set of muscles here organized in the urogenital and anal triangles, which have primarily voluntary control of waste management through the external anal sphincter and the external urinary sphincters.